Mbote Bandeko Nusiemi, welcome to another episode. I am Nabi Kefas, and in this episode, we're going to discuss the Bukongo and its encounter with scholastic Christianity. Salama Benazulu Benako. You mentioned uh, Congo di Angunga. Um, what yes. is the exact spiritual significance of Congo di Angunga? The true name of our kingdom was Congo di Antotila. Why Congo di Antotila? Because there were many Congos. The most famous of this Congo, this co different Congo, were the Congo Jantotila. So by the moment the king and the elite were Christianized, the churches were built, people were astonished to hear the sounds of the bells on the Sundays, mm -hmm. so due to the sounds of the bells, mm. the nickname, they cut they, their kingdom, Congo Diangunga. Ngunga means the bell. Yes. So the Congo Diantotila became the Congo of the bells. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you also have the, the word um, Ngonga, right? Ngonga, Ngonga mm. in, in, in Lingala. In Lingala, Ngonga and Ngunga are the same. Yes, it is the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the Congo elite moved away from Congo di Antotela and they adopted Congo di Angunga uh, because of the form of Christianity. Yeah having the bells when it was time for prayer and the mess, the miss. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we know, of course, that names are spiritual. And so moving away from your original name is like losing your um, your destiny, you know, or even your spiritual mm -hmm. character. Yeah, yeah, which is, which, is, which is bad. Yes, which is very bad because we know from history that we lost our spiritual character yeah, following mm. the example of uh, Christianity. Uh, mm. So the initiatory schools, they were considered a threat by the Christians, right? As they were coming in. The, the, as they were considered as being a threat, not just at the beginning, but especially when it came, when they came to colonization, because they realized that there is the element that led the black people to stand against colonization was the initiatory schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, the... if you take if you take an, initi an initiate like. Machua, Andre Grenard Machua in the Republic of Congo, or Mabiala Manganga, or Guetambongo, all those people, the three people were initiated and they led people against colonization. So the white people realized that, realized mm -hmm. that initiation was a threat for them. Therefore, when we arrived during the years 1930, they outlawed the initiatory school and they disbanded them. Wasn't it so that the um, Jesuits, uh, let me say the Roman Christian um, yeah, priest and were hunting what down? Did he? Wasn't it so that the Christians were hunting down great initi initiates to kill them? Mm -hmm. Not, yes, to kill them. Yes. To imprison or to kill them because they wanted to. Let me let, let me tell you something sad that was happening at the area of Kipasi 
around around the city of of Inkisi. The colonial authority would tell the black people they knew that most of them were initiate of Kimpasi. Now Kimpasi is the academy of divine mystery, mm -hmm. and in the divine mystery, power is obtained through the purification of thought. These the missionary knew. They knew that those people stick clean to their purity. So they will come in a village, they will tell about black people to get, get in the forest and to defecate. And later they will come and tell them, each of them to go in, in the same forest and to take their faces with their hands, what they have defecated, to take those sad materials with their hands. Hands, hoping that, that that way they will become impure, which is what was impossible because the purity which was being used here was a mental one. Another, mm -hmm. an another case that I can give you, in Madagascar, they had initiates that were strong in martial initiation so that they were leading the people in a war against the, 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 the French colonizer. Do you know what the French colonizer did? They took those Nganga, those initiates, those leaders, black leaders, they put them in a plane and did pass them in the ocean. Mm. The same thing they wanted to do with uh, Simon Toko. With Simon Toko, yes. Oh, my goodness. That's some wicked thing, eh? And so as the those, those missionaries were coming in, they were not coming to befriend us. Eh? We know that from historical documents, they were coming to colonize and to enslave the African yes. people. Yes. So the first pure, uh, objective was to destroy us mentally. And that's what I believe they focused on destroying the spiritual foundation, mm -hmm. yes, the mm -hmm. initiatory schools, because that was the true custodian of the Congo society. Congo spirituality. Yes, Congo spirituality, because spirituality holds the nation together. Yeah, so they went after that. But I wonder, did the Jesuit priest and the Europeans themselves, uh, did they see or were they aware of the um, similarities between their Christian faith and Bukongo? I can say the white people didn't see these for two reasons. Their complex of superiority and the fact that the white, the black people was hiding these from them. So they didn't know this similarity, but the black people did. Some may be astonished how the black people came to discern this, having not read the Bible. Remember, we are dealing here with initiates. We are dealing here with people who are in touch with the ancestors. So those ancestors could tell them that what they are bringing to you is a fake version of what you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yes, of course, they forced it through violence. Yeah. Um, but when we read the documentations of Hubert Ward, uh, Pigafetta, and, um, and some other European writers, travelers, they mentioned that the Congo people in their culture and tradition had Hebrew, uh, Hebrew customs. Yeah, and we know that Hebrew customs refers to the traditions of the so-called Israelites in the Bible. And so if they were able to identify 
those customs amongst the Congo people, I should suppose that um, many Christians, Jesuits who were coming in, knew and understood the fact that we were not pagans. In some extent, they knew also that there is a connection between us and the true people of the Bible. I cannot say that they were totally ignoring all this. According to me, they came into the Congo not as something that happened in a random way. No, I think they came of purpose. Mm -hmm. because they knew. Mm. They knew that the true people spoken in the Bible went into hiding. Yes. And where they went to the hiding, yes. they knew that they went to the hiding in a land which is covered by waters and in the south mm. of, of Sudan. This is easily to discern if you read, for example, Isaiah chapter 18. They speak there of a land which is beyond the land of Ethiopia. Now, the one who is writing is in the Middle East and is speaking of a land which is beyond the Ethiopia, which is mean south of Ethiopia. And we know that the Ethiopia of that time included even Sudan. So he's speaking of a land which is in the south of Sudan, which is the, the basin of of the Congo. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they knew. They mm -hmm. knew to mm -hmm. some extent. Mm -hmm. Congo Katiopa. Yes. Yeah. And so th 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 there is a tradition um, amongst the Congo people talking about uh, Bemba Zulu, uh, who brought uh, the people away from Egypt and to the south. Now, have you heard something? Uh, something of it oh, oh actually that is a an attempted story of the congo people done by the late um name one say one semi yes yes it is his attempt to write the story of uh, of the congo people but he did this not as a scholar but as a visionary so that uh, it is difficult for us as scholar to give true credit to what he wrote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Um, so now to keep oneself pure, uh, that is actually the, the focus of the initiatory uh, academy of, of, of the divine of the divine practice of, of the African divine tradition practice, of and to keep oneself pure or to purify oneself to the sanctification of thoughts and this yeah. also allude to the holiness spoken of in the bible yeah, that said mm -hmm. without holiness no one can see god in hebrew 12 i think verse uh, four or something yes without holiness no one can see god so that's the purification ritual uh, that we have in the Kimpasi, right? So we yes. can compare those two. And of course, in the book of uh, Leviticus, it's also written, be holy as I am holy. Mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. Bukongo, mm -hmm. as it seems, we were practicing that already. We were practicing that yes. for generations old. Yeah. Yes. Even if we go beyond Bukongo, we go in in Pama, in ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Osiris Ani claims the right to be a child of God in a manifest way because he has left a life, he has lived a life of purity. So purity was the mm -hmm. key for one to become back a child of God, mm -hmm. to see the divine. Exactly. Yeah, and purification uh, not only deals with your mind, but also with your heart. Because Jesus said, those who will see the Most High must be of pure heart, clean heart. Yes. So we see, you know, the disease being led to Osiris to be judged. And if your mm -hmm. heart is not pure, 
<laughs> you need a strong ad advocate there uh, to plead your case. Uh, so mm -hmm. the Lord's Prayer, uh, you also mentioned the adaptation of the Lord's Prayer uh, by Simon Kimbangu. So can we consider the Lord's Prayer as part of the Bukongo? I can tell you this, among the elements of Christianity that were adopted by the initiates, the Congo initiates, among those elements you find, you, you, you can find the Lord's Prayer. The initiate of Kimpasti did use the Lord's Prayer. They always used to say that it is a prayer that summarizes that summarizes all the needs that we mm -hmm. have. So they do they they incorporated that prayer in their system. Okay. Okay. Mm. And the Christ. Yeah. You mentioned something. Yes, and the notion of the Christ. I I I I did, I did speak of the difference between Jesus and the, and Christ. the Christ. They mm -hmm. knew. They knew this difference between because they knew that the concept of the Christ, of the Logos, the Word, is celestial and temporal. At the celestial level, the Logos is Pinanda, God the Governor. He is sometimes called God the Judge, like in the Bible, or God of Order, or God the Governor. But it is the same. It, it is the, 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 the same divinity. So at the celestial level, he, he was called Pinanda. But at the temporal level, he, he had a different name. In the temporal level, he was called Kimawungu or Kimalungila or Itafmalwangu. In the divine practice, we call we, we use Kimalungila, which is mean the fullness, the completeness. Now in Christianity, they just use Christ, Christ. But the African people used to distinguish. In Egypt, for example, at the celestial level, the logos is Ta, but at the temporal level, the logos is manifested as Horus. So we have always two different. And uh, in Bukongo, it is Kimalungila or Kimarungu. So they knew, they, they knew that the logos is the manifestation of the fullness of the divinity in Knox. And the Bible stresses this by saying that in Jesus, in him, lives the fullness of the divinity. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, yes. It's also stated that he is the manifestation of the logos. Yes. The logos yes. incarnated. Yes. yes. Jesus came to show people that they are the children of God because they have the logos in them. So he said, you are children of God, but for this to become manifest has, has at the extent as it is in me, you have to purify yourself. That is the teaching we have in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And this same teaching you find in the Egyptian book of the dead. And it is the same teaching that is also conveyed by the means of Mahulu. The practice of sanctification to become. Yes. Uh, yeah. To the, become the manifest son. Yes. The of practice of, of sanctification mm. is the key element for one to become a child of God in Osiris in a manifest way. A child of God in a manifest way. Was Osiris an African king? Or is he a mythical figure? No, no. Many people will really say that Osiris is a god. I will say no. Osiris is a nature. It is the nature of being a child of God. Osiris means child of God. If you read the Egyptian book of the dead, you will see that that initiate who has dead is called Osiris. His claim the right to be an Osiris and he, he is speaking to those who are Osiris so Osiris means only child of God now in Bukongo divinity of being 
is always male and female. The conjunction of male and female mean the fullness of the divinity. So the gods and the humans are depicted as being male and female. This was misunderstood by people by saying, oh, the Sumerian and the Egyptian divinity are couples having, having wives, etc. No. When Fukuyama explained it, he says, Muntu, the human being, is comprised of two parts. The male part, which is the right part, and the female part, which is the left part. Both parts combined leads to Muntu Walunga, the mm -hmm. complete human mm -hmm. being, mm -hmm. or an Osiris. Mm -hmm. So in Osiris, you have Osiris, which is his male nature, and Isis, which is his female nature. So Isis plus Osiris equal Osiris. Complete Muntu, Muntu Walunga. Yes, yes, Muntu Walunga, the complete human being. So it, it's not the case that Osiris was, um, how do you say that, um, lonely, and he s s searched for a wife, and he found Isis. That's not the case. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, 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 you know, the black, the black people use always to convey spiritual teaching to myth, myths. But those myths are sometimes intended to mislead other people. So we must be aware when using myths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have something on my mind, but so in Christianity they they don't really differentiate between Christ and Jesus. It's like Christ and Jesus are just one and the same. No, just Christ. No, they don't. They don't make that distinction. They don't. They no. take Jesus as and Christ as meaning the same and one thing. While in Bukongo and in the chemistry cosmology for argument. They are shown to be two different realities, mm -hmm. and and in the Bible, it is shown also to be two different realities. But they didn't, and they they, they misunderstood the Bible and they misexplained the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the the Christian European scholars are wrong. Uh, the term Christ. Yeah. Yeah, denotes one who is anointed, one who has received the, the ointment upon his head. And that word mm. in Hebrew, mesech, actually comes from the Negro Egyptian, or Bantu Egyptian, mese, uh, which uh, denotes the ointment, which is taken yeah. from the crocodile. Yeah? So we see a direct connection with the act of being anointed or let's say initiated directly connected with the crocodile. And the crocodile is of course um, a totem amongst the Bantu that deals with the power of the is, ancestors in the waters. That is very interesting, you know, mm. because to be initiated in Kikongo is uh, to undergo an initiation into Handa, Handa. In some dialogue, they say Ganda. Mm -hmm. So the one who is, who is initiated, the, 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 the act of being initiated is, is Ngandu. And Ngandu, Ngandu means, yeah. Ngandu means the manner, the manner of being initiated. And now Ngandu means also the crocodile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. interesting eh? So interesting. So in, in Egypt, they had that practice. They would take the, the fat of the crocodile and they would mix it with myrrh, you know, and some um, perfumes. And that was the ointment for the king to be anointed in his, uh, in his uh, ceremony of uh, initiation to become the king. And when he became king, anointed, he became a son of God. Yeah, when, and, because the, and this can be and, 
and so denotes a son who serves his people, but also serves God as the son of God for the people. And in a deep, in a deeper manner, this means also that the Pharaoh, the king, must be like the crocodile because the crocodile is powerful in water. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now water for, for the black people is the abide, the abode of the ancestors. So oh, it answer. is, it, 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 they, you, they were using this to say to the king that the ultimate power must be obtained from the holy ancestors. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly the case. Yeah, so we can say that the Bukongo was already present in the Egyptian yes. neutrality. Yes. Because the Bukongo yes. at least the can I can give you another instance of this. The word the word for creator in Bukongo is Mumba Loa. Now the word Mumba in Congo means also the cats. Mm -hmm. And in the Egyptian book of the dead, the God, the creator, is, is also identified as a cat. They said they call they, they say they call him Mao. Be, Mao. Like the yeah. like the cry, like the the the, the they, they were hearing the cat yeah, say Mao, the cat. Mao, Mao, mm -hmm. Mao. Also them, <laughs> Mao was. The, the, the creator. And you have, this is very interesting when you go to West Africa, God the creator is called also Mao. Mao. Mm -hmm. Mao. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so, um, now, interesting question. How can we understand the Holy Spirit in Christianity in the light of Bukongo? The, there is a lot of confusion in this uh, subject. Let me start for, for example, first with Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity has taught by the Black people mm -hmm. is the unity of the God of the Most High, God the Creator and the Logos. They are one in existence, one in substance, one in activity. A good example of this is when you stand in front of a mirror. You are in front of the mirror. There is the power of the reflection of the mirror and your image. If you act, your image acts. In fact, it is you acting in your image through the power of the reflection. Now, the Logos is the power of the reflection of the divine nature. So, God acts, acts in earth thanks to the Logos. That is the true meaning of Trinity. Jesus said, my father acts and I act. So, his, he was referring there to true. Trinity has conceived by the black people. Now, at the foundation of scholastic theology, what happened is that they did rely on their philosophers, essentially Plato. But Plato has studied in ancient Egypt. What we know today is that they didn't really learn the Egyptian religion, which was hidden to them. But when you abide with people who know, who lives their religion, you, you can get glimmers of what they teach. So after having started in Egypt, Plato got the glimmer that there is a trinity where there is a God most high and where there is a creator. Unfortunately, he confused the creator and the logos has been the same entity. So he added a third entity that he called the psyche. Thus the Trinity became God the Father, God the, the creator and God and, and, and the, uh, the psyche or the, the spirits. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So that Trinity 
in reality was brought by Plato. And any theologian will tell you it is a complication, a useless complication. Mm. The primitive cosmological argument shows that, that God is, is the simplest being. Why is it is he the simplest being that exists? Because God is made of one indivisible whole. So even a virus is more complicated than God because the virus is made of a protein and a DNA. But the DNA is a molecule with many parts and the, the, the protein is also with many, 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 many elements. But God is made of one element, an indivisible whole. So he is the simplest being that exists. Now, when you study a science, any science, I studied theology. But before theology, I studied architecture. So my purpose was to develop the spirit of architecture. When you study mathematics, your purpose is to develop the spirit of mathematics. The purpose of studying any science is to develop the spirit of that science. And what is that spirit? It is the power to discern, to discern the reality of that field of science. The one who study accounting must develop the to say the reality of accounting. Now, if you bring this in the field of divine science, the purpose of one studying divine science is to develop the spiritual perception, the power of realizing spiritual reality. It is the Holy Spirit. It is not a person. It is not a God somewhere. No, the Holy Spirit is the power to realize spirit, to discern spiritual realities. Mm -hmm. And so in Christianity, they say the Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God. Yeah, so it's... Beautiful. Personality, so it's it's <laughs> yeah, the third person. So God is three in one, mm, three mm. persons in one, and the Holy Spirit is part of it. Um, but if you do some research in in the word, the Greek word pneuma, uh, the Holy Spirit is also defined as the spirit of man and spirit of angel and spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, a spirit that help that must help you to discern certain yes. realities. Yes, your power of discerning spiritual truth, mm -hmm. spiritual yeah. realities. Because it's also the spirit in man. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So the Baloa, as they are called in plural, the Baloa are the creators of their um, respective universes. But the question yes. is, how many universes do, do is, how many universes do exist? We can't, we can't respond to that. We can't give a, def, uh, a definite answer to that query. We do know that there are many universes, but we cannot tell how many because mm. Remember, in heaven, the children of God have free will. So you and I don't know those who are at the time being misusing their free will. So all the universes are being created. So we cannot tell. So the universes are not created by the supreme being, right? The most high, but through the creators who are called Baloa. Right, who in the Bible yes. are called the firstborns. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the creation is an attempt to help those who have misused their free will and has fallen in darkness and chaos 
if you misuse your free will, if you turn away from God, now remember God is indivisible. You cannot say, oh, I just turned away from his love, not from his truth. It's impossible. If you turn away from God, you turn away from his fullness. Thus, it, you fall in darkness and in chaos. But you cannot be, you cannot disappear. You cannot, you cannot vanish because if you were annihilated, God will lose a relation with something and God will change. So God cannot change so that those children of God who misuse their free will, they become non-incarnated spirits groping in darkness and chaos. That is what the Bible refers when, he's, when it says the spirit of God was moving on the water. The true understanding is the Spirits, the 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 the, the non-incarnated spirits of fallen children of God, were in that temporal consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it says over the deep, eh, which the uh -huh. abyss. Yes. And yes. So they were yes. in a darkness. Yes. The same word yes. the Lord also used for the underworld. Yeah. Or the mm -hmm. of uh, spirits of departed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had a question in my mind. I I lost <laughs> it. Uh, all right. Um, what was it? Okay. Let me go to another question first. Maybe it will come back. And so. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, the book of Colossians 1, uh, where the firstborn are mentioned. Uh, when you look into, it's a funny thing, but when you look into the Greek word um, for firstborn, it's proto-tokos. Mm -hmm. And I remember that uh, toko is a Bantu word, which means a young adult man or young mature um, man. It's a funny thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But... If the true reality is spiritual, so what are we doing in the material world? What are we here for? Let's go back to the Kemetic cosmological argument. The Kemetic cosmological argument did show us that all reality is in God. Can there be a, a reality outside of God? If there could be a reality outside of God, that reality added to God will result in an entity greater than God, which means greater than the greatest possible be. The conclusion, the scientific conclusion is that there is no reality outside of God. So what is the temporal universe? The answer, it is a dream. Mm. In mm -hmm. it is a dream in the temporal consciousness of the creator. And here, Colossian is an interesting first Colossian chapter, uh, Colossian chapter 1, verse 12 to 16, clearly tells us that creation is in the creator. In him we were created. So Creation. So what is we experience, only... everything that, that we experience in life, it's in the dream. In the, the dream creator. of the creator. The creator in that dream is how it is like you, you, you know the phenomenon that is called the lucid dream. Mm -hmm. It is a dream where someone is conscious of dreaming. And so you can say like the, the world is a simulation. The a simulation. It's a simulation. In, not simulation as such, but the fact of being conscious in one's dream. You can even schedule your dream. You can say, oh, when I will be dreaming, I will go to visit my, my parents in Angola. In the Congo, it is called Kinoki. It is a potential. It is a, 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 an ability. So in lucid dreaming, 
people are conscious of dreaming. Now, if one who is conscious of dreaming meets someone who is not conscious of being of being of dreaming, he is dreaming, but he is not conscious of dreaming. The one who is conscious can help the other become conscious. So that is what is happening. We fail in chaos and darkness. We fell in a dream where we were unconscious of our state. Mumbalowa put himself in the same state, but through love, not through sin. So he was conscious of his state. He was consciously dreaming. So by consciously dreaming, he is helping us to awake, to become also conscious. So the process we are going on is the process of awakening outside of the dream. Hmm. Dr. Luya Luca. So you're saying that the, the our universe finds itself within the dream of the creator. Yes, I, I'm, I'm saying that we fell in a dream because, because this limitation cannot be real. All reality is in God. So we fell in a dream. So in order to help us, Mumbalawa put himself also in, he, he, he kind of slept, but by being, by being impelled by love. So he didn't lose the conscious manifestation of the logos. We did lose it. He didn't lose it. And because he didn't lose the manifestation of the, of the logos, even in his dream, he could chase the, the, the darkness, he could put order, and he could help us become, have a temporal incarnation and begin to awake from the dream. So this is so a dream. Us waking up is the ascension into greater purification, holiness? Yes, our waking up is our becoming back Osiris. Mm -hmm. our, and this we do through purification. This we do by the sucker of holy ancestors. So when we wake up, we come out of the dream of the creator. That will happen. That will be happen at the seven heavens. The seven For the heavens. time being, we are growing. So we have to reach the seven heaven to come out yes. of the dream that we are. Yes, we cannot jam. We cannot jam from the earth to the seven heaven. No, we we will we go going gradually. So is that what we say that we go in that spiral circle going up? We Yes, it is a spiral. We, we finish the cycle of life. We start another cycle, then on and on up to the seven heaven when we will wake up and find ourselves in the spiritual realm, awaken. The dream has ceased. Dr. Luya Luca, you know, it is not this, this, this is a scientific thing. This is demonstrable through the chemical cosmology argument. So it is not a speculation. So everyone who dies, because that is, is a huge mystery for many people, even for those who are in church, you know, all the religions try to give us an answer, you know, concerning the mystery of death. But the Bukongo tells us that when you die, it's a transition. And in the transition, you still will undergo growth yeah? and higher levels of purification where you go up until you reach the seven heaven. Yes. Hmm? Yes. In and fact, what and is that's it? the moment that you become the, 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 the purest form of yourself. Let, let me put it in Bukongo. In Bukongo, you have four stages of growth. We start from the earth. Those who doesn't accept the truth are in fire. That is in trouble. Even if they don't see it now, they, it will appear later. They are in hell. Those, yeah, those who ask, who accept the truth, we are in war now. It means that now we are in a process of purifying ourselves. So when we die, 
we go from one one water to another water but it, it is the same so I mean, if i take if i take the bomitaba they will tell you we go from one depth of the water to another depth of the water you go deeper you into the waters so it it means that we we go from one dream one material dream to a less material dream to a less material dream to a less material dream up to the moment the limitation which is the materiality will disappear mm -hmm. mm, okay now you said that those who accept the truth find themselves in water yes but dr Mille, now we are in water what is truth is it the christian truth the islamic truth the hindu truth what is truth oh my answer is that the truth is what is demonstrated through the chemical cosmological argument because that argument is an exact science so the truth is what the our ancestors did teach you know you and i know that all, all those people came from africa so all those people were connected at the beginning with the true religion by getting out of africa they also strayed out of the true religion which is the scientific religion we have the original religion because it is an exact science we can prove what we are saying the truth is what is demonstrated so the chemical cosmological argument which is an exact science mm -hmm. mm, so what they say in zila congo yeah, which is yes congo that's the true religion that's the truth that's the original that is the truth. truth okay so what and happened how, with our how ancestors how ancestors came here in the center of africa in order to hide that truth now it is time for the black people who detain that truth that is the congo people to give back to the other black people that truth and that's what we are doing in my academy in Jilaloa. Mm, okay. telling the black people this is the true religion your ancestors did were, were taught since the time of ancient Egypt, even from the beginning of the universe mm -hmm. and this truth this truth is being given back to you mm -hmm. that is what i'm demonstrating in my new book which which will be published in three weeks in three months mm, okay okay in three months yes the title will be in the beginning bukongo in the beginning bukongo yes <laughs> no. or in the beginning was the bukongo <laughs> that, that's something eh? Uh, i asked you a few weeks a few days ago how to say um the light of the world in congo right because i want yes to yes on that uh, subject but interesting I, I will be the first to uh, purchase that book um now the mukongo is the truth and the religion we should follow and the traditional religion for ancestors um, to reach the seventh heaven but i wonder Dr. Leo Luca, because you have said that the only way to reach the seventh heaven is to follow the truth, to stand in the waters, which the truth being Bukongo. Now, we have many in Christianity, many in uh, the Islamic faith and others, you know, other faiths. Um, so our people, they adopted many different religions. So what happened with them? When they died, will they have to return to reincarnate and to do over? What will happen? Reincarnation is not a law in Africa. It is a law in India, according to the cosmology. Mm -hmm. 
their cosmology teaches them that the good and the evil you see are illusory. The good and the evil you see are an illusion. And that illusion is called Maya. And when you die, when you die, you go to the higher, the inferior level, the illusion there is bigger than here. So the natural process for them is to come back to the real of the lesser illusion. So according to that cosmology, reincarnation is a law. Now, how our cosmology teach us, doesn't teach us that way. Our cosmology teaches us that the good that you see here is only a prefiguration of a higher good, which is among the ancestors. And when you live here, you go, you arrive at the ancestors, they will tell you, oh, the good you see here is only a prefiguration of a higher good, which is among the advanced ancestors. So the law that govern us is a law of progression toward the highest good, that is toward heaven. These, those are two different cosmologies. Now, I don't say that there is no reincarnation in Africa. I'm saying that in Africa, reincarnation is not a law. It is an exception. That exception happens in Two cases. Those who die here, having not done their job, having not well done your job, it is like in school, you were in a third form, you don't do your work, and you buy a good record in order to go to a higher class, a higher form. You will have trouble there, you will not understand what is being told there, and you will be attempted to come to the real of the of the lower floor. That's what's happened with those many people. They find after dying, they find themselves in dire difficulty. They cannot grow. So they choose to reincarnate. Not as impelled by a law, but impelled by their own failure. That is the first case. The second case is this one. We are here in this lower realm and we have situations that we cannot cope with. And we, 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 we call the ancestor and we tell them we have trouble here. And they ancestor look down and they don't see someone among us who can solve the problem. So they take someone there, they initiate him, they allot him with, with spiritual power and he comes to be born here in order to solve that problem. Well, the case of big idiots like Simon Kimbangu, Simon Toko, and all of them. So in that case, you have also reincarnation. So aside those two cases, reincarnation in Africa is not a law. Now, speaking of reincarnation, it is called also transmigration of the soul. It means that the soul with the company of one of a body, that body ceases to live, and it, it finds itself with the company of a new body. Two bodies are involved. The first body, which we cease to live, and the new body, which begins to live. That is the transmigration of the soul. People confuse this in Africa, that process with what I call the transmigration of the spirits. Those are two different phenomena. In the transfiguration of spirit, remember we said the spirit is the power of understanding. And the spirit can leave a person and reach other person. When I'm speaking, when I'm explaining things, a spirit, the spirit which is in me is being transmigrated to those who are hearing me. Remember in the Bible, it is said that God took the spirit which was in Moses, which was in the prophets, and they put it in 60 other people and they began to prophesy. This is transmigration of spirit. And when it happens, 
the qualities, the ability which, which, which work in, in, the, in the, the giver are seen in the receiver. Now, when a child is born in Africa, many will confuse and tell you that all oh, it is an, an elder who is reincarnated. I would say no. The elder is not reincarnated, but his spirit is transmigrated to the newborn. Why I say this? Because he becomes he becomes the protector of the newborn. Both of them are alive. The ancestor is alive in the beyond, and the newborn is alive here. And the spirit of the ancestor can be transmigrated to more than one person, more than one baby. So this is not reincarnation. People confuse it, confuse these two notions. You have the transmigration of spirits and the transmigration of souls. What happens at the birth of the child in Africa generally mm -hmm. is the transmigration of the spirits. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that the transmigration of the soul uh, denotes that the, the, the soul continues, right? Continues with yes. the journey. Yes. The journey yes. The, of progression. Yes. Going yes. It continues its journey. Ones. It continues its progression. It see it, it leaves the company of the first body and it it, it takes the company of, of the new body. Mm -hmm. The first yes. body ceases to leave and the new mm -hmm. body becomes living. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. And so the transmigration of the soul alludes to the continuity that is different from the progression and the transmigration of the spirit uh, denotes the, the, the sharing of one's quality to others. Yeah, spiritual quality. Mm -hmm. Sharing others. one's ability, sharing one's ability, sharing one's love by becoming a protector, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's actually biblical. No, it's it's 100% biblical. <laughs> no Christian can yes. go against this. <laughs> it's 100% biblical. It's in the Bible. But that's interesting. Oh, to, you, to... You, 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 can see, you can see this in the book of Luke. When Peter was, was freed by the angel from the prison where he was saved by Herod. And when he reached his brothers, he knocked at the door. Yes, yes. They said the, his angel. The young, man, the, mm -hmm. the young man who came saw that it was Peter. He went back and said, it is Peter. And they said, no, it is his angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's so, it means, so it means that each one of us has an angel or an assessor caring for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, probably they look like you because... Uh, mm -hmm. Um, th there is another example in the Bible where they talk about um, two people, a teacher and his uh, disciple, cross the Jordan River. Uh, they were named Elijah and Elisha, mm -hmm. and Elijah was taken up, uh, taken yes. up. He went to heaven, and yes. his disciple, yes. his student, received his his mantle, his coat. And as the and as he recrossed the river, joining other students, they saw him from afar, uh, and they said to, to themselves, to each other, "Hey, the spirit of his master is upon him." Uh, so that's to say that yes, that Elijah is the case of the transmigration of spirit. Yes, uh, denoting the trans um, migration of the spirit. And so he received the spiritual qualities yes. of his masters and the young prophets, eh, Bangunza, Banganga, were able to discern and to see the spirit of El Elijah upon him. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's why I said... That's a good case of transmigration. Of scripture. No one can go against it. So it makes sense. It actually makes sense. Yes. Yeah, but that's amazing. That's... Uh, and so you have the transfiguration of Jesus, and um, now you introduce a, a, a second, uh, the transmigration of the soul and the transmigration of the spirit. That's amazing. Yes, yes. <clears throat> you have two phenomena. Yes, two 
Phenomenum, yes. Dr. Luluka, uh, I have no questions left. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful session, a beautiful broadcast. I hope uh, our watchers um, really enjoyed this um, treasure of information and in our dialogue. Is there something you want to say about your books uh, behind you? I will just close by saying mainly to our brother who are in the diaspora, to the brother scholar, black scholars who are in the diaspora, that the book Congo is has not been deformed by scholastic theology. No, her ancestor did keep the essentials of their teaching. And this truth is revealed today by the congruence that can be established between, on one hand, the book Congo and the committee cosmological argument, and on the other hand, between true Christianity and the same committee cosmological argument. And this reveals that the book Congo is an exact science. And this reveals that the white people were and are up to now ignorant of the true import of Christianity. Ingeta, do you wish to say something about your books uh, behind you? About uh, the book that are behind me, the the, the <laughs> title of the the one who, who which is on top. The title it started is book Congo. In that book, I speak about the religion, the Congo religion, its definition, and um, I speak about its scientificity, uh -huh, its connection with the religion of Sumer and Egypt, and it is a very interesting book of 400 pages that I urge people to buy. They, it is this book, they are, all my book can be, can be found on Amazon, and as I tell you, in three months, the new one will will be released, and the title will be in the big Be in the beginning world to Congo. Dr. Luluka, how are you writing so much books? What's your secret? <laughs> Tell me. You know, my secret is simple. So purification, you can develop your intuition. The ancestors are around you and within you. But they are respectful of your free will. The more you obey to your intuition, the clear they will become. Let me tell you something. I was speaking with uh, an initiate of Vodou and of Rose Croix. He gave me many experiences. He did, he did this, he did that, etc., becoming invisible, etc. I gave him only two of my experiences. And the one of them is that I wrote my PhD thesis in three weeks. I say three weeks. Because I was relying more on my, on my, on my intuition rather than on people. We, we, were, we have been told to rely on our, on our brain. These we have to we have to rely on our soul, on now on the intuition, and how our ancestors did teach that the soul is not in the body. The body accompanies the soul, like your shadow accompanies the body. So the soul is not in the body. So through the purification, our soul can trip to higher level and bring knowledge to us. We will call this intuition. The more you obey to this intuition, the clearer, the clearer they will become. So uh, by relying on my intuition mostly, I could write my theology, my PhD thesis in three weeks. Dr. Luluka, you, you state that the soul is not in the body. <laughs> no. Uh, how is that possible? We know, I know about the in Fumukutu, the, the shadow, you know, but I also understand that the, the soul abides in the blood, right? In the human body, so no. the soul is on the forehead. 
No, in all those terms, humukutu, ntima, moyo, they are mm -hmm. expressing the same reality, the invisible reality of being. Remember, when Placid Temperance was talking with a bunch of people, they told him that the physical body is just an appearance, a shadow. Now the soul is the reality. So reality cannot be in its shadow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like you see the soul is outside of the physical body. The soul is outside of the physical body, like the like the body is outside of its shadow. Mm -hmm. Is that the reason why? Mystic people are able to kill you without touching you, without touching your yes. physical body? Yes, because the reality of a being is not in the body, it is the soul. And the, and when you when you sleep, they meet with your your soul. And when they 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 they, 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 they destroy you in that plan, you feel the destruction in this body. Hmm. Because reality is in the invisible. Reality is not the visible. The visible, the visible is just the shadow, the appearance. Okay. Nekongo kalunga. Kalunga also means love. So when we are purifying our thoughts, we may also purify our hearts to walk in love. And the greater yes. we walk in that purification and love, the greater our soul will be. Yeah? Yes. In power and in light. Mm -hmm. mm, oh, that's beautiful, eh? <laughs> Doctor Luca Matondo Matondo hmm? Ingeta ah. Beautiful, beautiful. I always enjoy our sessions, you know, there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of wisdom. And um, I hope you, the viewers, also understood uh, what we discussed, you know, that you learned something. And Dr. Luya Luca will of course return. And it's not the last time we'll uh, arrange um, other sessions and for the future we will also look to organize another seminar yeah, so stay posted thank you everyone for watching and yeah, once again special thanks to dr luya luca so tatanzambe bless you all and we see each other the next time Ingeta. thank you so much Ingeta.